It was the summer of 1996 and we were getting some outstanding titles. Sega's weird and wonderful Nights into Dreams, Namco's killer sequel Tekken 2, and even Nintendo's genre-defining epic Super Mario 64. Things were pretty damn good and there was no shortage of great games to play. So when Die Hard Trilogy came along in August, I can't say I paid it much mind. I mean, among that list of great releases, why would I want to play what was no doubt some half-assed movie game? Surprisingly, this PlayStation Sleeper had gotten some halfway decent reviews, so I kept it in the back of my mind as something I'd need to try out eventually. It would be a while before I'd devote some time to it, and shockingly, I enjoyed what I played. So when it showed up on the Saturn four months later, I picked it up ready to give it a full playthrough. The question was, how did it hold up on the Saturn? Was it still worth playing? And did it live up to the lofty expectations set by Probe Entertainment's previous movie game, Alien Trilogy? In this episode, we will answer those questions and a few more as we go over Die Hard Trilogy for the Sega Saturn. Like Alien Trilogy before it, this is loosely based on a series of movies under the Fox umbrella of properties. Unlike that game, however, each movie here is separated into different genres of games. There's Die Hard, which is a third-person shooter that has you rescuing hostages and disarming bombs. There's Die Hard 2 Die Harder, which is a Virtua Cop-style light gun game. And finally, there is Die Hard with a Vengeance, a car combat game where you hunt down bombs before they explode. The really cool thing is, is that each one is a full-length experience composed of many levels. The first game is 26, the second 8, and the third 16. This makes for a massive amount of replay value considering it's a single disc title. The first game has John McClane battling terrorists at the Nakatomi building in Los Angeles. Starting in the basement parking garage, you must move your way up floor by floor, getting rid of the bad guys and their bombs. Each area has hidden weapons, armor, health, and extra lives you can pick up to help out. You have both a strafe and a dodge mechanic you must employ to have any hope of seeing the end. The graphics engine uses transparent walls to give you a wider view of the area around you, and it works for the most part. It allows you to see hostages, items, and bad guys that have otherwise been obscured. The frame rate stays moderately smooth most of the time, but the textures are rough and the enemies are about as simple looking as they can be. It's a hell of a fun game though, and a great start to the package. Ah, that's better. Take this, Yankee. The second game starts out in an airport where the bad guys have taken hostages and must be taken out. This portion is pretty much the Virtua Cop formula verbatim. A targeting reticle surrounds your target with the red ones being the largest and most immediate threat to you. You can get weapons, shields, and extra health, but blowing away hostages takes away points. Being a light gun title introduces a few options here that radically affects the quality of this. If you have the means to play it with a stunner light gun, it's an enjoyable romp that is challenging and well worth a go. Playing with the mouse or controller is a complete letdown, however. Your targeting icon is too big, has terrible lag to it, not to mention the way the screen has a sway to it as you move it around that makes being accurate unbelievably frustrating. The performance here is also really bad, adding to that difficulty. You'll be seeing that game over screen a lot more than you want to. The third title takes place across the streets, sewers, and parks of New York City. The gameplay and setup can't be any simpler in this one. Follow the on-screen marker and find the bomb before it explodes. Sometimes that bomb may be moving, which makes it much harder to get rid of. 
The path you take is also not always as obvious as following the arrow. There are icons to help like Extra Time, Extra Points, and the Beyond Helpful Ambulance, which takes you straight to the bomb. In a bizarre twist, you'll also be mowing down helpless bystanders in this one as you navigate the city streets. There's just no way to avoid them. I guess to save the many, the few have to be sacrificed. While I would love to sit here and extol the virtues of this game's graphics, every word of it would be a lie. This is a damn ugly game most of the time, especially the second one. A few minutes with the PlayStation original and you'll honestly wonder how the hell Alien Trilogy turned out as good as it did on the Saturn. Every area takes a hit. Transparencies are completely gone, now replaced by mesh textures that just don't look as nice. This means the walls, windows, and explosions in every game are affected. Performance does fare better in the first and third game, but things are really rough in the second. The chug-tastic frame rate affects not just how it looks, but how it plays as well. Again, you can forget trying to play it with a controller. It's just entirely too choppy and laggy. A solid bright spot for the visuals is the third title, which manages an engine that both looks and runs quite well when compared to the PlayStation original. It kind of makes you wonder were three different teams in charge of the different games for the Saturn. I mean, how is it that an on-rail shooter runs and looks so much worse than an open-world car combat game? What sense does that make? Remember Virtua Cop 2 on the Saturn? How is it that it looks like this while Die Hard 2 looks like that. Fortunately, the other two pick up the slack enough to really hang in there and save the visuals from the complete shit show of the second. So where does that leave Die Hard Trilogy exactly? Do the rough visuals hurt it enough to make it a pass? Despite my displeasure in how much of it looks and runs, Die Hard Trilogy is a solid experience. The first game Die Hard plays very well. I love the exploration elements and the hide and seek nature of the action. Not only are you looking for hostages, but you must hunt down the bad guys while you do it. The performance doesn't hurt the way it plays, and while the pop-in and mesh textures are an eyesore, it holds up well enough to make the illusion of running around a high-rise building work. The third game is also a winner. The open road, the challenge, and the graphics are all strong enough to keep you coming back and feels very much like an arcade game. The real bummer here is Die Hard 2. It looks and runs like complete shit, plain and simple. While you can skirt the hit on gameplay by using a light gun, playing with a controller and mouse, and fighting that cursor while it succumbs to the horrible performance just isn't fun. It makes things much harder than they should be, and you're gonna die a lot. In fact, I don't see how the game can be defeated with a controller. The lag and screen bouncing is so bad at times, you are guaranteed to have a ton of trouble hitting anything. 
But you know, the good thing about this one is the fact that you can skip the second game entirely and stick to what it does much better. I find myself coming back to the first title often when I want a fun third-person action romp. In fact, I kind of wish that Probe Entertainment had focused on this as the main game and fleshed it out with a melee combat system and boss fights. It could have given Die Hard Arcade a run for its money. Still, what is here can be very fun and if you must play Die Hard 2, make sure you do it with a light gun. Often during the Saturn's life, multi-platform titles got a bad name for their less-than-stellar showings. Despite Die Hard Trilogy being a solid experience overall, I'd say it definitely fits into that category. This is a better game on the PlayStation full stop. It runs better most of the time and has much more impressive special effects. I will say that this is still worth a go on the Saturn for the sake of curiosity, however. The first and third games play fine and many of the problems of the second can be offset by using a light gun instead of a controller. Still, I can't help but be disappointed with it. The Saturn's Alien Trilogy had held its own against the PlayStation release, but this was clearly a step back. Perhaps having to deal with three different engines instead of one was the problem, I'm not really sure. It could also be the case that the PlayStation was the lead platform, so it wasn't tailored very well to the Saturn's hardware at all. Whatever the case, we have a multi-platform title that was still pretty good on the Saturn overall, and I do recommend it. It's a hard game though, so if you plan on beating it, you're going to need some serious time investment to see those endings. There are save slots, and I highly advise you get used to using them, because replaying the same segments over and over kind of sucked. There is also an infinite lives cheat that makes it much more tolerable for those looking for a quick game here and there. If you are privy to both a PlayStation and Saturn, stick with the former, but the latter definitely can be a good one to play every now and then. I'm SigaLordX, thank you guys for watching, and I will catch you next time.